I'll be talking more about the focus of what the cluster does rather than the people, um, which is slightly different maybe from what other clusters have been doing. Um, but let me begin by talking about the name of the cluster because in some ways this is an enigmatic name, but in others it describes quite well what the cluster is all about because one of the key ideas behind the cluster is to disrupt any neat distinctions between nature and, and society, nature and, and, and human technology. Nature for us is not something that is out there separate from human society, rather it's entangled with and co-constituted with all sorts of human practices and technologies in all kinds of complex and continuously changing ways. And it is th it's that co-constitution, those entanglements that are really at the heart of much of the research within the cluster. So some of the questions that are being addressed include how does the materiality of, of such processes as drought, resource extraction and global warming affect and mediate human experience and knowledge, as well as public debate and politics? What is the role of non-human things, from lab animals to bikes in a bike sharing program, uh, as you can see, for instance, in London, in how economies and environmental change are governed? And how do experimental practices in, for instance, bioconservation, co the arts and also academic research open up new ways of living with experiencing and understanding the Anthropocene? Now, these and other questions, for many of us, can only be addressed through new logics, methods and concepts. So there's a strong commitment to theoretical and methodological innovation that pushes the boundaries of both common sense and scientific, com and scientific convention. And there's also a strong uh, commitment to transcending the boundaries between disciplines, geography, science and technology studies, the humanities, information science, engineering, the life sciences, and so on and so forth, as well as a strong commitment to transcending the boundaries between academic research, design, and the performing arts. At a more concrete level, I would say that there are three key research foci around which the work in the cluster is organized. And the first of these is materialities and their role in society, econo the, the, the economy, and culture. And research here really focuses on a wide range of forms. Water, tigers, oil, smartphones are just some of the examples of the things that we're interested in. And in all cases, the emphasis is on their behavior and the effects that are being generated and on how these materialities are imagined and governed. Mobility is the second focal theme. The transport of people and goods features prominently here, not least because of the strong linkages between the cluster and the TSU. But there are other mobilities that are being considered as well. There's substantial interest, for instance, in the digital mobilities and big data that are now being enabled by modern communication infrastructures. And there's also a lot of work on the movements of human bodies in, for instance, uh, artistic practices. And key interests here relate to the lived experience and governance of mobilities, as well as the social, economic and polit political effects that they generate. And the final theme is politics in its various guises. So some of the research considers the geopolitics of research, re resource extraction and bioconservation. But other key concerns revolve around knowledge controversies and who or what participates in processes of governance, decision making and policy. And as part of work in this area, Sarah Watmore and Katharina Landstrom have developed innovative methods to what they call redistribute expertise and to reconfigure computer modeling. And they've originally developed these kinds of uh, methods in research on flooding and they're now working on work on drought and it's on that work that Katerina will now continue the presentation of the cluster. Thank you. <laughs>